Yeah, there we go. There we go. I think I'm live. Tick or uh, YouTube live. <clears throat> I was trying to figure this thing out. But I wanted to hop on here. I'm uh, loaded out here, and I just figured I'd uh, take this moment here that I have to hop on here and do like a little QA. and think I'm connected. Somebody comments, and then I'll know for sure. Usually my phone looks a little different when I go uh, YouTube live. For some reason, it's looking a little different. I don't know if they changed their settings or what. Wait and see if somebody... Hope all is well, brother. Yes, yes. There we, there we go. There we go. Now, I, hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for commenting. That way I know it's, it's working. So, come on in, Maine, Colorado. Hello, Eli. Hello, Kyle, Andrew, Daryl, Nick Smith, Benjamin. Man, got all kinds of people hopping on here today. Well, guys, I uh, I wanted to get on here and, and kind of, you know, if I can get some questions, great. If not, I, I got a story I want to share with you. In in Now, I've been on TikTok, you know, and I've been on Facebook, YouTube, all social media, uh, sharing, you know, my Amish upbringing, the rules and such, answering questions. Since I've been doing this, multiple women have reached out to me and uh, wanted to to know if uh, they can get a hold of me, you know, through email or whatever. And three of them have secretly admitted that they've been secretly having a um, relationship with an Amish man. And the one that stands out this morning when she reached back out to me this morning was that she's now left hanging, raising this kid. No child support, no nothing. So here's what happened, guys. She said when she first started watching me on TikTok, she uh, was not far from the Amish, and she started dating this young Amish man, 17 years old, and he was um, joining the church, you know, the the, less, the the classes that you take to go through uh, to follow the rules and, and such to, to prove that you can uh, follow the rules and then the Amish church will baptize you. So this is all taking place and she starts befriending him and uh, realized really quickly that this young Amish man has no problem messing around having an affair with a worldly English woman. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. And she reached out to me and she let me know, just like many other women have, that had a secret affair a relationship with an Amish man, sometimes married Amish men, yeah. Um, this one here in particular, the man was single, okay? So she starts talking, befriending him, and before you know it, they're having a sexual relationship, and they're hanging out. They don't, the Amish family, the Amish church don't know about it. And uh, and I told her, I said, be careful. Last month when I talked to her, I said, be very careful as this stuff is playing out. And then she admitted something to me. She pregnant. <laughs> She's pregnant. I said, What? You're pregnant? What the heck are you thinking? I said, uh, he's Amish. Do you think you're going to get child support and all that? She goes, oh, no, no, we're good. We're good. I said, what do you mean? She said, he told me he's going to leave the Amish. I said, and you're believing that? <laughs> she said, yeah, yeah, I, I believe him. He, he's pretty serious. He said, yep, yep, I'm not going to get baptized. You know, I, I'm going to drop out and I'm getting ready to turn 18 and I'm going to leave the Amish. Uh, I said, okay, good luck, good luck. This morning, she gets a hold of me again. He's staying Amish. She's getting ready to have the baby. I mean, she ain't going to have no child support, no nothing. Because the Amish church will, anybody that is committed to be Amish and, and to the church and its rules, the Amish will use their religious exemptions. They will protect you. They will go to court for you. She screwed. And I tried to tell her that. But here she goes and has an affair, and now she's going to have his child. And he says, oh, I'm getting baptized now. And, and uh, since, I'm, since I got baptized, I made that oath to follow the Amish church and its rules for the rest of my life. And I said, uh, you want to go Amish? She goes, no, oh, no, he, he's already dating an Amish girl. He's going to marry her and have an Amish family. <laughs> I mean, guys, I tell you what, if you're a female that is listening right now to my voice, if you've thought about messing around with the Amish guy, don't do it. It's very dangerous. I mean, first you might want to maybe marry him and join the Amish, <laughs> and it might work out. But if he's trying to feed you a bunch of lies to, to get what he wants, to get in your pants, and tell you what you want to hear, don't do it. Don't do it. Because that's what he did here. And I tried to tell her no. I tried to warn her, but she wouldn't do it. 
So now uh, the way the state of Ohio is set up, they don't the state don't push the Amish for that stuff. Uh, so it, it doesn't matter what happens. Uh, they're they're going to win. They're going to win. The freedom of religion and the exemptions they have. Uh, I know the state of Ohio, there's been multiple former Amish that reached out to me about these kind of cases where they, uh, the one spouse wanted to stay Amish and the other one didn't, and they have always lost. They always side with the Amish. It's, a very, it's the second largest Amish uh, community in the world is in Ohio, and the Ohio law, they really back up the, the Amish. They, they respect the Amish, and, and they just won't, they won't touch them. Uh, you, you talk to a lawyer to try to fight the Amish, they don't want nothing to do with it because they already know it's not going to go nowhere. So I wanted to share that uh, share that story on here this morning and uh, let you guys know that, that those things can turn very nasty if you're one of those people that think that you can uh, maybe go out and, and mess around with an Amish man. It could turn out very ugly. But anyway, I'll try to get to some of y'all's questions. Why are the Amish selling their farms here in Ohio? Well, you might be in an area, Big Daddy Warbucks is his name that asked that. You might be in an area where they're having a split. Lots of times the Amish, when they're having a split and they can't get along with the rules, oh, it happens all the time, guys. And when they can't get along, they will go relocate. And sometimes they'll sell their farm. Like in, in the 2015, my community had a huge split. They got so angry at one another, they couldn't agree on the rules. And a whole bunch of them took off and moved. So a lot of the Amish farms were being sold to non-Amish people. And so that, that's probably what you're experiencing there in your area. Let's see here. Is there anything you miss about the Amish lifestyle? Oh, I miss the entire lifestyle. I just don't miss the rules and the religious aspect of things. But I do miss the lifestyle. Well, I still kind of live the lifestyle. I still grow a garden, live off the land, can my meat, can my vegetables. I still uh, hang on to those values, you know, of, of living off the grid. So, yeah, I do miss the lifestyle. I just don't miss the religious cult. Let's see here. Illinois coming in. Man, we got people from all over the place coming in here. Can you tell us about powwow? I don't know what that is. I'm too Amish to know what that is. <laughs> I don't know if you're talking about maybe Room Springer or something. I, I don't know. Hello, I'm from England. What is the views from the Amish to the English? Well, they, they refer to everybody else that's not Amish. They refer to everybody as English. If you have been following me for a while, you'll know that. What makes Amish a cult? Well, the Amish are a cult. Uh, not all of them, but the ones that are considered a cult, like for where I come from, they're a cult because they use manipulation, brainwashing to deceive the people, believing that you must be Amish in that way of life or you burn in hell. When you control people with rules and ideology, religion, then that becomes a cult because everything that they teach, you must be that way or you burn in hell. So due to fear, people stay there. People are under bondage. And, and that is, if you look up the definition of a cult, it talks about one man starting something and getting many followers. And when you have that total power and control over that group, that is the definition of a cult. Howdy from Michigan. Why do the Amish sell worldly food to the English? Because that's how they make money. That's how they love doing business with all the other people. Why are the Amish children and women not allowed to speak to the worldly people? Now, that's not in every community. In some communities, you'll have that. Like the very strict, like Schwarzenegger Amish. Lots of times you'll see the, uh, the women and the, and the children just kind of uh, keeping to themselves. I had a man the other day get a hold of me, and, and he was trying to uh, be nice to the Amish woman that he uh, met face to face, and she literally turned around and walked away from him. Uh, that's because that's one of those communities where she won't speak not unless the man is around. Uh, some of those very controlled communities, sheltered communities, the women 100% submit to the to the man in all aspects of life, and and she won't speak not unless the man is around. So just know that some of those communities, if you are encountering women and, and children that are kind of tight-lipped and they, they just walk away or they don't want to talk with you, it's not because they hate you or that they're racist. It's just because of the way they're... they're, they're they're brainwashed. They're deceived. They're the, their way of life. They're, that's there's the only that's the only reason they do what they're doing. 
Are the Amish allowed to read the Bible at home or study the Bible? Well, it depends on the church rules. Um, in my old order, cult, again, that's by, by what I'm, I'm going to answer your question, but by answering this question, you're going to know that my group can be called a cult. Some of the new order Amish are having all kinds of Bible studies, no problem. But if in my community, if you had a Bible study, if you actually gathered a bunch of people together and said, hey, let's have a Bible study, you would have gotten shunned for that. You are not allowed to have a Bible study because the articles of faith are being used with rules. Those rules have to be followed first and foremost. So you're not allowed to read the Bible because they know if you do, you might be set free. Like it says in John chapter 8, um, John 8, 31 and 32, if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. People would be, would be set free from religion. Yeah, they know that. Oh, they're not stupid. The bishop, the elders, oh, they know that. And that's why they ban the Bible. You're not allowed to read it. And they enforce the German Bible. They have a German written Bible, Martin Luther 1522 Bible. And they, they already know you can understand that, but that's the Bible they enforce. And then they tell you that you should never try to make sense of it. That the devil will deceive you, I was told. If you try to read too much into the Bible, the devil will deceive you. Uh, how, how does that make any sense? I mean, if you read the Bible, it'll set you free from religion. But it's just, it's, it's a tool that the devil uses to keep people in bondage. Are the old order communities mostly cult-led? Oh, absolutely they are. All of the old order are cults. Hey, that, there's a David Aish. That must be a former Amish. Wie bist du in Dudo hat? Kannst du mich verstehen, was ich ihm sah bin? Ich bin gut. Ich bin, ich bin gut, du. Wie bist du? Es ist ein dog. Es ist ein really schöner dog, du hast. Hey, Eli, love your videos and your energy. Hope you are having a great Friday. I'm having a great Friday. It's an amazing day. I hope y'all are doing great. What is the best way to visit an Amish village? Oh, you just drive in. You just drive in the community. You can go do business with almost all of them. You can drive into any house. They'll talk to you. They're going to want to know what you're there for. And if you, if you want to just tell them, hey, I'm interested in your lifestyle, they might show you around the house. They're pretty. Most of them are pretty open to that. But some of them, some of them do allow Bible studies. It's more of like the New Order Amish around Holmes County, Northern Indiana. Northern Indiana, they allow Bible studies. You can get together and have English written Bibles. But the Old Order, they, they don't want you to, to read the Bible for yourself. I'm pretty sure the Amish up here are very old order. You can tell if they're old order because if you look at the buggies, the, the old order usually have open buggies. There's no glass, no windshield allowed. Uh, they have the lanterns. The, all the old order Amish have lanterns on their buggies, while the new order, they use some really bright lights, almost like car headlights. They got batteries underneath their uh, seats in the buggy. And all, and some of the new order Amish, you'll know if you're in a new order Amish when you hear music and a boombox jamming music. <laughs> you'll start hearing some music just jamming out. I mean, they're having a good time. They're just clip-clopping down the road, and you will you can feel the ground shaking with those big old systems they got in the back of them buggies. <laughs> Northern Indiana, they do that. They jam out over there. Man, they're wild Amish, they say. That's all we see up here. That's right, Matthew. Anna Hunter, do you have faith in Bible values? Oh, absolutely. Like love, goodness, forgiveness, and freedom? Just a question. Oh, absolutely. That's what it's all about is love. You, if, if people actually were full of love, they wouldn't control others, right? With religion, rules. Jesus was love. Let's see here. Are there any type of sports in the Amish? Yeah, we played. We couldn't play no basketball. That was way too worldly in my community. Couldn't play football. Those were worldly sports. But we could play like baseball, but we renamed it to Shipwreck. <laughs> we couldn't play, we couldn't name it baseball because that was a worldly word. But we could set it up in straight. The bases were straight. You had to bat the ball out with the bases straight. You couldn't have the triangle. So we, we were allowed to play basically baseball by rewording the name and then repositioning the bases. Instead of first, second, third on a triangle, it was first, second, third all in a row. <laughs> because you had to be opposite from the world. I'm telling you guys, my group was pretty, they were pretty strict. They, they even, 
My group of Amish did not even want to do business with other Amish that allowed that Rumspringa thing. You know how there's some of them that are uh, running around and, and doing their thing at 16, 17, 18 years old where they get to explore the world. When, when that happens, my group disagrees very strongly with that. They, they, they say you can't, I, they just don't understand why other Amish could allow youngsters to go outside of that Amish church to explore the world and go party and go ride a bicycle and, <laughs> and go do whatever they please. And so my group of Amish, they don't allow the running around, the room springing. They don't allow that. And they also didn't allow us to go date someone, date a girl over in another Amish community that allowed the room springing because they were considered the worldly modern Amish. So we had to stay away from those Amish and we didn't want to do no business with them. You had to, you had to stay away from those worldly devilish Amish. See, they don't, my group doesn't only disagree with all of you worldly Englishers. <laughs> But they also disagree with the other Amish that are more modernized, with less rules. For example, we couldn't have bicycles, but 20 minutes up the road, they had bicycles in that Amish community. We were not allowed to date there. We were not allowed to do business with them. We couldn't buy or sell with them because they were the modern world, the Amish. They somehow were not allowed to get into heaven because they were not strict and legalistic like we were. <laughs> so growing up as a little Amish kid, I really believed it. I, I thought as a little tiny Amish boy, I thought, man, we're, we're something special. God is really going to give us a lot of rewards in heaven when we get there because we're keeping every rule right to a T. <laughs> Until I got older in the teenage years and I realized, uh oh, but Bishop, all the elders, yeah, they're not following the rules either. They enforce them, but they don't do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do. That that happens a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I did not learn about the planets in school. We were not allowed to know all that. That was none of our concern. It's crazy the difference from your old order and the old order I grew up in. Yeah, David H., there's a huge difference in a lot of those communities. I always tell, oh, by the way, I told this one guy, he was a former Amish, and he was from, like, eastern Ohio, and he came from like the more new order, but I was calling him new order, but he was like, oh, no, no, it's old, it's old order. And I'm like, no, dude, some of the stuff you're telling me, it's way more modern than where I'm from. And he's like, no, we were old order. I said, okay, all right, I'll let it be. Then he said, some of the stuff you're sharing, I've never heard that. I grew up Amish. I'm even doing business with the Amish. Everything's great. I, I, I can't believe half the stuff you're saying, Eli. I think you're making a lot of that crap up. I said, okay. I invite you to come to Kenton, Ohio, K-E-N-T-O-N. And guess what? He did. And he came over and he started doing business, buying some of the lumber off of their sawmills and all that. And about four months later, boom, he was shut down. You know why? Because he slipped a couple Dutch words and they realized, oh, he, he knows our language. <laughs> and, and they said, hey, hey, we got to have a meeting. We got to have, we can't do no, no more business with you. They had a meeting and came back and questioned him. The elders and the bishop came back and said, hey, uh, you, you spoke really plain Pennsylvania Dutch, and we know you're not from the English to where you just learn how to speak it. You come from the Amish, don't you? Yeah, but I do business over in Holmes County, he said, and all these other Amish. He goes, no, 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 no. We don't do business with those Amish. If you were from the Amish and you were already baptized, you're done. We can't do no more business with you. And then he gets back with me and he said, Oh my goodness, now I start believing what you were talking about. I said, exactly, exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about now. People that don't believe me, they have to go to that cult. They have to go to that community and see it for themselves. Because they will tell you if you were baptized in the church and then broke away because you wanted to be free from religion, they'll tell you you're going to hell. Yeah, they'll tell you straight up, there's no chance you get in heaven. They want total power and control. They believe they're the special chosen people because of who they are. You know, and that that's, that's it's a deception. That's what they believe in. <clears throat> I can't believe it. I made a live show. Hey, Eli, good to see you live, sir. Well, good to see you guys. Glad to see you on here. Are you coming to the Step Out of the Boat conference in March? Nope, nope. I, 
I messed, I made a big boo-boo. I was at the first one and the second one, but I'm going to miss the third one because I've been traveling all over the place now, speaking at different churches, different conferences, and it just landed on one. I, I had no idea Joe Kine was going to schedule the, uh, the conference this year on the exact same time I'm speaking at a different conference out West. And so, uh, I, I feel bad. I, I got to do a better scheduling next year, but no, I, I am going to miss the step out of the boat conference this year. Eli, how big was your old order Amish community? Well, when I left, there was four churches, about 250 Amish people. As of today, it's tripled, almost quadrupled. There's more than 10 churches. They are exploding because every 20 years they triple in size because the average family, they have 15 to 17 kids. And so they're, they're growing really, really fast. Is there divorce in the Amish? No, divorce is not allowed in the Amish. Uh, people that have a divorce that try to join the Amish cannot join them because the, oh, I should not say all the Amish. My group of Amish, where I'm from, you could never, ever have a divorce. That's an unforgivable sin. When my, uh, when my mom and, and her, some of her uh, sisters found out that I uh, split up with my first girlfriend that I was, uh, when I first met her after I left the Amish, and I told mom, I said, well, we're going to get married and all of this stuff. And she came down and they confronted me about that. And, and they wanted to make sure that I don't marry her. And I said, I'm, I'm getting married anyway. Well, eight months later, I had a dissolution agreement <laughs> because it, she didn't even know. We, we just didn't we wasn't comparable at all. But I thought I had to marry her in order to have sex. So it, I, that's what I did. I, I married her right away because that, that's what I was used to. You don't do anything. You don't, you don't even kiss or hug until you're married. <laughs> and so that's what I did. Well, it didn't last, but when she found out about it, she got all her sisters together, hired a driver and came to where I was working at and they were bawling. They were, they were, they had tears running down their cheek because they thought I was condemned to hell. They, they heard I got a divorce and they thought that's the unforgivable sin. And they said, well, now, now we will never see you in, in heaven with us. And they were so, they just wanted to confirm if I did. Because they, they, they're taught that. They're taught that if you got a divorce, you're condemned to hell. There's there's no hope for you. <laughs> I mean, that's what they believe. So no, the Amish church where I'm from, they do not allow any divorce whatsoever. N that would never be allowed. And if you did anyway, yeah, you'd be excommunicated. Do you have a lot of people in the community that ask you to help them escape from the Amish community? I'm responsible of helping over 200 of them leave now since I've left. This year will be 25 years that I left. I left in 1998. And I've, I've helped more than 200 people leave now. And that's also why they hate me. <laughs> that's also why the Amish hate me. Because they know I've been responsible for uh, for helping a lot of people. By the way, guys. <clears throat> tonight when I get off of work, I'm on a mission. And and my dad's cemetery, where I, the Amish cemetery where my dad is buried separately. I've done videos on that before. Every time I put flowers or decorations around my dad's grave. Now, remember, he's by himself in the corner. He's condemned. They judged him. They condemned him. They put him separately in the corner away from all the other Amish. And <laughs> yet when I put flowers, decorations on my dad's grave, they go out every time and they destroy it. They do not allow me to put flowers or anything on that grave. You would think, even though that's against their religion to do decorations and flowers, you'd think they'd leave him alone. They already put him separate. They already said he's going to hell. <laughs> they already condemned him. So then leave him alone and leave me alone when I want to go out and put flowers on it. So tonight, I'm going to go out and put a uh, hidden camera up and I'm going to put some decorations on there. And I got a, I got an app here on my phone and I'm going to watch see if I can catch these Amish fools going out there vandalizing my father's grave. And if I catch them, I'm going to turn that right into the sheriff's department because I already talked to the sheriff about it. And they said as soon as I get them on picture or video, they're going to go after them. And so we're, we're going we're gonna to see if they put their money where their mouth is and see if they actually go and do it because we're going to find out. So I'm going to put up a hidden ca By the way, they're not even allowed to be on camera or picture or anything. Oh, it's going to be on the other side of the fence in the weeds. And we're going to find out. They're going to be on camera if they come and destroy it again. 
Eli, have you made it clear that we are allowed to repeat unanswered questions? <laughs> Whatever that means. Have mercy on their soul the way they pervert the word of God. I know, yeah. On the innocent people deceiving them. You got that right. Do you believe the Amish religion is a cult? Oh, absolutely. I was just talking about that earlier, by the way. My dad passed away the same way, brother. Sorry to hear about that, Jacob Wagler. Yeah, you know, guys, I'm going to say this. Your minds would be blown if you know how many suicides have happened in, among Amish communities, especially the Old Order Amish, where it never gets reported as a suicide. They just bury them. Nobody knows what, that it's out of control. There's a, a young man that committed suicide not long ago, and he left a note. And, and the note read like this. Well, I wanted to leave the Amish. They told me I'm going to hell. The church said there's no way I can get to heaven. And I'm living in hell by, by with what I'm going through right now in the Amish life, being physically abused. He even had endured sexual abuse. And he wrote on there that, I'll tell you, get ready. If you got a weak stomach, get ready. Because he wrote in his suicide note that, okay, so I'm going through a living hell. And I wanted to leave the Amish to be free. And they're saying, now I'm going to burn in hell. And he believed it, obviously, because that's what he wrote. So he said, well, guess what? I'll just enter hell now. And he took his own life. He said, hell would be better than living this. And they just buried him. They just buried him. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't care. They, they, that's what they teach. And so I'm going to tell you right now, with, with how many suicides never get reported to outside law enforcement, they have a lot of blood on their hands. The Amish, the old order Amish, and I, I always got to repeat that because there's a lot of new order Amish that have phones and they watch me on here and they, they go berserk on me. And, uh, but I'm going to tell you something. They have a lot of uh, blood on their hands. On Judgment Day, uh, that's in God's hands. We, I'm not going to try to do anything. You don't, don't get even with them. Don't do anything stupid among the Amish to try to get even with them. But on Judgment Day, God is going to hold them accountable. Hey, Eli, Southern Baptist preacher's kid here. Is there such a thing as middle old order Amish? Middle order Amish? No, they call them new, new order. <laughs> there's old order Amish. There's Schwarzenegger Amish, which is even more strict than the old order. Then you have new order Amish. You have new, new order Amish. Then you have the beachy Amish. Then you have <laughs> the Dan Game, the Dan Church. They, they're they named after names. They're, they have names. They have levels levels like that but not not that i know of as far as the name middle or anything like that is suicide actually in the bible or is that man's law it's man's law it's man's whatever man wants to do to control people they use whatever they have to do for that do eli do the uh do you think elders or bishops watch you to know what you are up to yeah some of them do some of them have reached out some of, have, some of them have tried to silence me. They have phones. They sneak around. Sometimes they see it on their drivers. They all have taxi drivers. Sometimes they'll watch me on there and they'll try to reach out and try to silence me on here. They can't stand it that I'm exposing some of the, you know, like the sexual abuse, incest, uh, suicides, what I just talked about a little bit ago on here. Uh, they, they hate that when I talk about that because nobody's really exposed that. And uh, when you when you start exposing them, they know that that's going to cause outrage. Uh we have now been responsible for more than 20 investigations, open investigations right now. For example, like Fillmore, New York, when a anonymous Amish tip came uh, out to us at Amish Rescue Mission, we um, I, I called that same morning right after I hung up and I called the uh, I looked it up the county. It was Allegheny County, New York, and I called the sheriff and told him exactly what I was told and kept his name anonymous. As of today, that 66-year-old preacher is behind bars. And they just recently had the Me Too kind of movement. Me Too, Me Too. More Amish women came forward. So he was abusing a lot more, and they didn't come forward until he was in prison behind bars. And then they felt safe to come forward. So uh, that's why I do what I do, guys. Uh, we just, you know, we, we keep making awareness. We keep speaking out about stuff that has always been hidden. Uh, for example, there's only been so far one bishop now that's been charged for uh, hiding abuse for 30 years. Um, we were able to prove 
because of former Amish that were, were abused, victims that left the Amish, that were able to testify in court that they had to forgive. They, they were told you must forgive the perpetrator uh, for sexual abuse. And it was covered up for 30 years. So when he stood before the judge, this bishop never committed any of that sexual abuse. But he got 30 years in prison because for 30 years covering it up, they gave him one year for every year that he did not do anything for the victims. So if, if you start holding them accountable and you start uh, charging the bishops for, you know, there should be mandated reporting. That's a law. If there's crimes being committed, you don't. You call the law. You you get justice. You're, that's what you're supposed to do. Just because you're religious and you're Amish, that doesn't put you above the law. But they've always had that system. They've always inherited this system. And they don't know any better. They, they think that's God's true church. And they're held to a different standard. That you should never go out and say anything to law enforcement. That you should never go out and say anything to anybody else. So yeah, guy, I tell you what, guys. You can help. You can help if you're around those Amish communities. Give them our phone number. We get calls every day. Just before I went live, I had another call come in. 888-621-1985. If you can even write it on a piece of paper and give it to Amish children, teenagers. There's so many of them that's called us. We've even reported cases for them. They can stay anonymous. They don't have to say anything about who they are, their names. That way the church don't get backlash or whatever. But we always, you know, any any tips, we forward that to the, to the FBI in some cases, sometimes local law enforcement. If local law enforcement has a good relationship with the Amish, uh, usually I can tell pretty quick. They don't want to touch them. So then we get the feds involved. Usually the Federal Bureau of Investigation, when they come in, they pressure the sheriff's department. No sheriff's department wants the feds involved. So I usually uh, I usually get them involved if they don't want to do their stinking job, what they're hired to do, voted in to do. You know, they're elected to do a, a job. But yeah, I could talk a lot about all that. Can your mom remarry? Oh yeah, she could. My mom could remarry because she's, you know, widowed. Uh, but she said she would never get remarried to another Amish man because uh, my dad did not die a natural death. My dad died because of suicide. So my, uh, my mom said she will never, ever get remarried. Now, the Amish are all allowed to get remarried if they're widowed, if their spouse passed away. And that happens quite a bit when they, you know, cancers, other disease, whatever. And if they pass away, then they can go marry another widowed. Uh, sometimes they marry somebody that's already got 10 plus kids. And so, uh, yeah, they, I saw LDS missionaries in Amish County. I was like, what the heck is going, are you guys doing here? That's not good because the LDS, they're a cult too. That's not good. And uh, by the way, we had, a, we had a lot of other religious people coming into the Amish community to try and uh, try and evangelize to them, even the JWs, Jehovah's Witness. Please post the phone number. I'm in the car. Yeah, I can try to get the phone number posted. Let me see here. Can I comment while I'm... See if I can... Uh... Heck, I can't even reply back. I'll just put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the video once I hang up. I'll put it in there. 888-621-1985. Also, guys, you, our website for Amish Rescue Mission is AmishRescueMission.org. www.AmishRescueMission.org. And it's amazing what they're doing. They just, by, by the way, on the uh, YouTube page, Amish Rescue Mission YouTube page earlier, there's a... Uh, Rachel, she's the CEO of Amish Rescue Mission, and she had two other former Amish women on there, and they're speaking about abuse. And they, they talk about in Pennsylvania Dutch and in Swiss Dutch. There's two different types of Dutch that the Amish speak, and they were talking about abuse to help make awareness. And it's really been helping for those that sneak around phones and stuff, and they can see what we're doing, and if they need help, they can reach out. And then the most wonderful thing, praise God for this one, uh, since we've been making awareness, we got some Amish that also, they hate evil. They hate uh, child predators, uh, you know, pedophiles. And some of them love what we're doing. They're good, loving Christians, and they're still Amish. And now they are teamed up with us. Now we have Amish safe houses. So far, it's been a lot of former Amish safe houses. Now we have Amish safe houses because here's our, here's our, our, our goal at Amish Rescue Mission is to help victims... Be free. Help them escape from abuse. If they want to be Amish, we want to make sure they're Amish. If they want to live the Amish life, 
we want to make that happen for them. We don't want to control them and say, well, you must be this religion or this denomination or this and this. No, there's no more do, 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 do. It's we love you. We love you and, and we're going to open our arms and help them and, and put out a hand to help them, counsel them, get them professional licensed counselors if they need it and help them alone. Not tell them you must do, 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 do. No, no, no. That's all they heard growing up, uh, Amish. So our goal is to get them out of there, rescue them, and then if they want to be Amish, we can put them in an Amish home into one of the Amish safe houses. That way they can just live a free life away from the pedophile, away from religion, because in the Amish church where I come from, it, the, the perpetrators were always forgiven and the victim had to forgive. If the victim brought up what happened, that means you didn't forgive, they say. See, how, how's a, 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 a victim that has a deep wound supposed to heal if you're told to keep it? Shut up, shut up. You're not supposed to talk about it. You got to keep it to yourself because if you bring it back up, you didn't forgive. Now they give the victims harsher punishment than the perpetrator. For example, we had one girl, one victim call us out of uh, Richland County, Wisconsin, and uh, she reported, uh, you know, the predator, family member that was doing the sexual abuse to her, incest. And so it went to court because we reported it. Now, when the Amish found out that she called us, called the law, she got 15 weeks in the shunning period, in the ban. How much did the perpetrator get? Four. Four weeks, that was it. And they forgave him, you're good, because he was committed to the Amish life. He was committed to the Amish church. But the victim got 15 weeks because she called the worldly people. Guys, that's a problem. And so our advocates with Amish Rescue Commission went to court. They protested. They were holding up signs. And they made it very well known that the perpetrator was forgiven after four weeks and the victim here is still in the ban at the time, 15 weeks, still in the ban for calling for help. Guys, I'm telling you. So if you guys want to help us at Amish Rescue Mission, call. You can call us too. It doesn't just have to be victims. Call us. 888-621-1985. And our website, www.amishrescuemission.org. And my load just pulled up, so I got to go hook up to my load. And this ex-Amish preaching truck driver's got to keep on clip-clopping with my 18 wheels. <laughs> I got to go hop in my worldly buggy and keep on rolling. Y'all have a blessed day. I love you all. See ya.